don't know about you, but usually when I go on a fishing trip, I'm looking for good weather. This one, however, we have got it completely the other way around. The weather's diabolical. Right now we're in the snowy mountains. We're at the Snow Goose Motel in Adaminibi, and we're here for one reason. Tomorrow morning, we're shooting up over the top of the hill here, and we're fishing the Yukonbean River for the annual spawn run of the big brown trout. The trip getting here today wasn't that much fun. Driving up over the range, it was snowing, raining, and blowing 45 knots. But that's what these big trout love. So for now, it's a matter of having some dinner, getting a good night's sleep, and we will be on that river right on dawn tomorrow. Hopefully those big brownies know we're coming. zero degrees and it's hard to believe I'm as excited as I am. There's been a serious amount of rain up here on the Yukonbean River over the last couple of days. The weather's now broken a little bit, the wind's died and with this river rising that's the trigger for the big trout to move up out of Lake Yukonbean up into the river to spawn. It's a busy time of year, there's cars over there, there's cars up there, there's guys fishing all along the river but the great thing about this is that there's plenty of fish for everyone. You can fish one run and catch multiple fish. It's a very exciting time, it's a very social time. Everyone chats and talks and everyone's interested to see how everyone's going. And this morning I'm gonna fish hard body lures. A lot of guys fish flies and stuff like that, but I love throwing my hard bodies, big rapalas like this, just on light spin tackle. And then when the light gets up, I'll go back to the car, grab another rod and we'll do some drift rigging or glow bugging. Bit of a mix up of techniques. We'll fish anywhere from down at the mouth to right up in the tree line. As I said, it's a very exciting time of year and it's probably up there in, I don't know, my two or three favourite styles of fishing. I've said it to a lot of people, it's hard to believe that being cold could be so much fun. Taking a lot of cast this morning to get these fish to eat a hard body and I've been fishing this run because I just know they're here and it's quite funny that that whole dawn period when I usually do very well with the hard bodies was quiet and it's not till this sun came out I've had two hits or bumps and they've just missed it have one fish that ate the lure and the second he ate it he just came straight out of the water and threw it and now as it's getting a bit more light the fishing getting a bit more aggro and I've connected with this beautiful big fat brown trout. I'm just gonna try and edge him out of this current. Whoa, I've just sort of got him. Here we go, I'll just edge him up into here, guide him out of that current. And there we go. That is a cracking way to start the day. Alrighty, that. I think is about as good a way as you could hope to start oh, a nice chilly morning. And that guy has just whacked that new little BX minnow. Just a beautiful male brown trout. Certainly not a monster for this part of the world, but I tell you what, it makes a long drive from Melbourne well worth it. Pop the hooks out of this guy and we'll get him back. Now past that first light period, I searched my way all the way up the river looking for fish with the hard bodies. Now I've come to the tree line where the river narrows and there's some deep runs that go through here. 
So I'm going to change from the Rapala to some glow bugs and nymphs and we're going to bounce them along the bottom and hopefully find some big patches of fish. There he is. They often just feel like a snag at the start. They just sit there, don't move. They don't realize what's going on. And the interesting thing is that often the big fish will swim upstream. This guy doesn't even know he's hooked yet. He's still trying to work it out. of just getting these big, slow sort of head shakes. And they'll prop him behind a rock often and just sit there and you think you're snagged up, but you're not. And it's just that there's some seriously big fish here. A trick with this spawn run fishing too, unlike a lot of other stream fishing, is that in this run here, there could be one, there could be a thousand fish, you just don't know. So just because you've caught one doesn't mean you move. Oftentimes, once I catch one, that's when I get really, really serious and I start casting and casting and casting. And some guys will actually just fish the one run or the one pool all day long, and at the end of the day, they'll have, you know, five to 50 fish, who knows? This is a pretty solid fish, I haven't seen him yet. There's the split shot, there's the leader. Oh, he's not that big actually, he's just had a bit of a go. The female that's eaten that glow bug. But that is a nice fresh run fish. See how she's a lot silvery in color. She's got more of a, a whitish belly. She's just smashed that glow bug and she's in prime condition. Very, very thick through the shoulders here. She's beefed herself up for one thing and that's to grow big lay eggs and make lots of trout. So I'm gonna send her back on her way to do what she needs to do. And this fish amazingly could end up 50 kilometers upstream from here, no problem at all. And they can do it in a very short space of time. The interesting thing, as I said, she's quite silver. She's only just come out of that lake probably, you know, sometime in the last couple of days which is a great sign. You get these really dark guys and they're the ones that have been in here for a bit longer. But it's always good to see a fresh run of fish. Got him. So I don't think this is, oh, he's not a bad fish. Oh, he's a good fish. <laughs> How's that? Two casts later and you're into a, another fish and this is often how it goes. Oh, don't go downstream, mate. I've got to try and just get him out of the flow. Oh, come on, come back upstream, pal. I don't really want to move. And this is where I just love this long rod. A lot of people will be going, what is he doing? It's an eight foot long rod. It's one of the Storm Shore X. It's actually a shore jigging rod, but it is absolutely perfect for this glow bugging stuff. It would also be ideal for fishing surface lures for brim and whiting up on the east coast. But for doing this, I'd almost go so far as to say that it's potentially the best glow bugging or drift rigging rod that I've ever used because it's nice and soft. When you hook these fish, you sort of just lift into them rather than striking and missing the you know, the, the hook up on these tiny little flies. So you now I'll just slide this guy in through here. And it's a good thing to use your surroundings to land your fish. If I can get him in there, see now I've got my feet behind him. And that, let me tell you, is what makes driving to the snowy mountains, fishing in the cold weather, all about. Look at that. That is just a beautiful big brown trout. That's a male, that big jaw, that hook starting on his bottom jaw and he uses that to fight with other males and bite other males. And I can tell you now, this is why I come to the Snowy Mountains. I feel so lucky to have grown up in Cooma and be able to come up and do this every year. Now it's a seven hour drive, but it's a quick seven hour drive when you're thinking of catching fish like this. And just one fish like this makes your trip, but I'm hoping to find more. Look at those big shoulders on them. And people wonder why the trout in Lake Eucumbine and Jindabyne get just so big. It's a pretty simple factor. There's millions upon millions of yabbies in both the lakes. They are a massively high protein diet for these big brown trout and they just mooch along the bottom, chowing down on big fat yabbies all year long. 
and that's what gives you this sort of quality of fish. Let's send this guy back. Cold, but let's get another one. in that one little spot right at the tail of this run here I reckon there's about a metre of water that I've pulled every bite out of this guy doesn't even know what's going on yet he's just shaking his head hasn't quite woken up but it will it's got a light drag a long soft rod when you get the system right it really just works Come on mate. You still want to bully them a little bit though because you don't want to fight the fish for too long because you don't want to burn them out, make them use all their energy because they do need to swim a long way and lay eggs and do all that. Look at that. It's nice to see a bit of a mix too of males and females here. And some are eating the glow bugs, some are eating the nymph. This girl has eaten the nymph. And for such a slippery fish, you can grab a trout quite easily by the tail. If you grab it that way with the V of your hand there, your thumb and your forefinger, that way, if you try and grab them this way, they'll slip through your hand every single time. But this is a nice, easy system. That little tiny black magic nymph, and I'm stoked because the New Zealand guys have some of the best trout fishing in the world, so they know how to build a fly. And Black Magic have done just that with their whole new range of trout flies. This guy thought it was pretty good anyway. Well, this girl, you're off. Flies crashed, it's been bent out again. The very tip of it's just gone. So rather than risk losing what could be the fish of a lifetime, and I can tell you now, I grew up in the snow mountains, lived here for 18 years, and I never caught my 10 pound trout out of the snowies. So every time I'm here, I think this could be the trip. So I want to make sure everything goes right. This is my little box, just with my glow bugs in it. Little black magic glow bugs, they're all different colors. And that little whitish coloured one can be quite good. But overall, I do like just my orangey patterns. I have them in a range of sizes from tiny little ones to some quite large ones. And in the big, fast water, I'll fish a big glow bug. Chuck that nymph in there. That one's wrecked and that one's wrecked as well. So I leave them in that side. Then we flip over and this is where all my good ones are that aren't trash just yet. So now I'll pick out another nymph and we're back in business. Good. This is the one. Maybe. Maybe. See how he's going upstream. This is good. This gets your heart going. It's that light drag. Sort of one of those things you I sort of work on the theory that with there being so many, you know, two to four pound females in this run at the moment, there has to be a couple of giant males jostling for position on them. And let's hope this is one of them. Saying that sometimes you just get these really fit fish that, you know, five pound, they're just like teenagers, they're in their prime and they've just got lots and lots of power. I can't really see it, but it's a nice goldy color and it really shows the variation of the fish you can get in here. Come on, pal. Come on, mate, out of there. No, he's not that big, he just had a real go. Still, you could fish for a very long time in your life to catch a fish that is the size of this thing here. Hey, not that way, pal. He's not as big as I thought he was going to be, but 
I don't think anyone could deny that that's a pretty serious sort of brown trout. I'll just quickly pop this hook out. And give you all a better look of what is one of my favorite fish. It's starting to snow and it actually makes it all the more enjoyable. It sounds ridiculous, but it really does. And to my wife, Rach, I did invite her on this trip and she just goes, not a chance, it's gonna snow. But that's what makes it so good. Wish you were here, Chook. Let's send this guy back. always talk about being organized and doing this it is critical especially when it's cold because the last thing you want to be doing is making rigs so I use my black magic rig holder I use these guys for everything from whiting fishing to trout fishing and everything in between they hold the rig neatly and this is the rig it's quite simple but works very very well tiny little swivel down to this dropper of line that comes off here we crimp our weight onto that and as that rig bounces along the bottom, generally it's the sinkers that'll get snagged. So when you pull it, they'll slide off and you don't lose your whole rig. From there, down to some eight pound black magic fluorocarbon leader. And then we've got the black magic glow bug and a little black nymph as well, which drag along behind the split shot. It's a really effective way to fish. The gear I'm using here it's very versatile sort of gear. I've got my eight foot Storm Shore X rod. It's the 802 ML. It's very soft, very light, perfect for this and a lot of other light tackle fishing applications. I've got one of the new Akuma Seema 30 reels. And I would have to say that for a reel that retails at under $150, this is one of the best pieces of gear that I've ever used. It doesn't throw wind knots fishing with this braid. And this is four kilo Black Magic Inferno braid and doing this sort of stuff you do tend to get a lot of wind knots at times because you're winding back a lot of slack line. And after a couple of days of fishing up here, it has not thrown one wind knot, which to me makes it just a great reel. It's beautiful gear to fish with. It's nice and light and it's just so versatile. The long rod allows you to cast a long, long way, but it also allows you to keep the hooks in those big fish because you're only fishing tiny little hooks. Out of that current, out of that current. Don't go down. Here we go. And once you get him out of that main flow, you can sort of change the fight a lot. This is a pretty reasonable fish, I think. If you can't get the fish to come back up, you go down to them. I'm gonna try and slide him back up. That's where this rod's so good. It's just nice and soft. You don't feel like you're gonna pull the hooks all the time. You, you will still pull hooks, but it's quite forgiving. Here we go, got him out of that flow. Wow, it's actually, it's a bigger fish than I thought it was gonna be. And this is pretty well getting up there to what I think is one of the best looking brown trout that you get. It's very, very gold in colour. It's a big male. And a big head, big hook jaw. Come on, pal. Look at that. I'll ditch the rod. It is just such ridiculously good fun doing this stuff. You never know if the next fish is going to be two pound or ten pound. For me, I've never found my 10 pounder in the snow mountains, but maybe that's what keeps me coming back. But even if they said you're never gonna catch a 10 pounder here, I think I'd still be here a couple of times a year just to catch fish like that. It's up here to do one thing and that's breed. So I better send him back so he can make a whole lot more little trout for me and all of you people to come and catch. And all these boys. Let's get out of here, it's freezing. 